Translation and Purple by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai. Oh, how supremely glorified is the dynasty of King Yadu, and how virtuous is the land of Mathura. With the supreme leader of all living beings, the husband of the goddess of fortune, has been taken has taken his birth and wandered in his childhood. Purport. In the Bhagavad Gita, the personality of Goddess Sri Krishna has expressly given a description of his transcendental appearance, disappearance and activities. The Lord appears in a particular family or place by his inconceivable potency. He does not take his birth as a conditioned soul quits his body and accepts another body. His birth is like the appearance and disappearance of the sun. The sun rises on the eastern horizon, but that does not mean that the eastern horizon is the parent of the sun. The sun is existent in every part of the solar system, but he becomes visible at a scheduled time and so also becomes invisible at another scheduled time. Similarly, the Lord appears in this universe like the sun and again leaves our sight at another time. He exists at all times and at every place, but by His causeless mercy, when He appears before us, we take it for granted that He has taken His birth. Anyone who can understand this truth, in terms of the statements of revealed scriptures, certainly becomes liberated just after quitting the present body. Liberation is obtainable after many births and after, many, uh, after great endeavor in patience and perseverance, in knowledge and renunciation. But simply by knowing in truth about the Lord's transcendental births and activities, one can get liberation at once. That is the verdict of the Bhagavad Gita. But those who are in the darkness of ignorance conclude that the Lord's birth and activities in the material world are similar to those of the ordinary living being. Such imperfect conclusions cannot give anyone liberation. He is birthed, therefore, in the family of King Yadu as the son of King Vasudev, and his transfer into the family of Nanda Maharaj in the land of Mathura are all transcendental arrangements made by the internal potency of the Lord. The fortunes of the Yadu dynasty and that of the inhabitants of the land of Mathura cannot be materially estimated. If simply by knowing the transcendental nature of the birth and activities of the Lord, one can get liberation easily. We can just imagine what is in store for those who actually enjoy the company of the Lord in person, as a family member or as a neighbor. All those who are fortunate enough to associate with the Lord, the husband of the goddess of fortune, certainly obtain something more than what is known as liberation. Therefore, rightly, the dynasty and the land are both ever glorious by the grace of the Lord. Omigan Tivadandasya Gyanana Shalakya Chakshuri Tamidanya Tasmay Shi Gurve Maha Shri Chaitanya Mahusnam Stapitanya Nabhutale Swayam Bhagada Maya Dadati Swavadati Kam Mancha Kapa Tudu Vischa Kripasindu Vyavicha Patitanam Bhavini Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shiva Sri Gaur Bhakta Rinna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Nama Nama Hare Hare Jamma kama chame divyam evanyo veti tatpata tokta dema punajama naitima meti sojana. One who knows the transcendental nature of Krishna's appearance and activities upon and uh, knows him in truth, upon leaving this material body, he attains Krishna's abode and does not come back. This is the goal of us hearing about Krishna. To have that Vasudev Kataruchi, to have that taste to hear about the glories of the Lord. Otherwise, it's just a waste of time, whatever we're doing. Because that is the way of attaining Krishna. 
You cannot love someone if you don't know them. It's not possible. If you, you got someone, you know, oh yes, I love my wife very much. Oh, tell me about it. Oh, I just love her. I don't know anything about her. <laughs> you know, what she looks like, she, no, I don't know. How can you love? So, to hear about the activities and the appearance of the Lord um, is, um, is, is highly important. And his appearance is not like the appearance of the conditions of De or Svinya, Yata Dehe, Komanonya, Banam Jara, Tatata, Hantara, Prapti, Deira, Statanamui. The conditioned soul is uh, going through the body from, from baby to childhood to youth to old age. And similarly, at death, passes into another body. And sober person is not bewildered by such a change. But most of us are not sober, intoxicated by the senses. The eyes want to see so many things. The ears dragging us here and there. The tongue let's taste so many different things. And especially touch, the, the sense of touch is dragging us in so many different directions. We're just being bewildered and distracted from our own self. As the spirit soul, Aham Brahma Smi, that I am a spirit soul. Atata Brahma Jigyasa, that now you have attained your human form of life, it's time to inquire about spirit. Who am I? Where do I come from? What is the purpose of life and what happens to me after death? Krishna is not a condition, such a condition. So, Ajao Pisan, Abhyatma, Bhutanam, Vishwara Pisan. That he is unborn when he appears. He comes in his own form, uh, in his Abhamaya, in his own internal potency. He doesn't take birth like ordinary. Although it appears like he does. So the example Prabhupada is giving here, just like the sun. The sun rises in the eastern horizon and then sets in the western horizon. But it doesn't mean there's a new sun that has appeared. It looks like that. <laughs> the sun is in its fixed orbit. It's always, it's always been there. But sometimes it's in our vision, sometimes it's not. Same thing happens with Krishna. He appears once in a day of Brahman. So the next time he comes, it's about eight million, eight million six hundred forty, or eight billion six hundred forty million years. So that's the wait a while. So five thousand years ago is nothing compared to that. It's like yesterday. What to speak of the appearance of Lord Chaitanya? For only five hundred years ago. We're in, still in the wake of the splash of mercy that Lord Chaitanya has thrown at us. So, in, if we, when we understand that the Lord is always available, then um, it makes it very exciting, actually. And how, how do we get excited about the Lord's appearance? Uh, if the Lord's existence in our lives is by remembering His pastimes. The appearance of Lord Krishna is amazing. Um, when He appeared, He didn't even appear like an ordinary baby. When an ordinary baby appears, um, there was one comedian, sorry to quote a comedian, and uh, he was, him and his wife were, they were intellectuals and they'll, you know, they wanted to do a natural childbirth, you know, so they got, they were doing training and then they got a diploma and, you know, and the husband gets a diploma and there's all this different breathing that you have to do. And then, um, when the, when his wife was giving birth, she was screaming and yelling, they were trying to do the, the breathing and it was very painful. And finally the, the doctor delivers the child and she's like, you know, a bit tired from it. And she, he kisses her on the forehead and she goes, and he says, congratulations, you've had a child, you've given birth to, to a lizard. I was like, what? Because he was saying that the, the thing changed color like five times, you know. <laughs> I don't know what this is. It comes up crying and screaming. This is the conditioned soul taking birth. But when Krishna appears, full jewelry, full beautiful hair, effulgent with a helmet and, and, um, and a 
own beautiful body and, and even a, this yellow dhoti which is like this has this uh, silver aura of electric like like lightning so it's electric lightning I don't know in when he was uh, approaching Bhishma Dev when he was about to kill Arjuna said that he, he would, when he was going to attack Bhishma that his dhoti had this aura, an aura of electric lightning very beautiful so he appeared like that, full of jewelry and clothing and beautiful hair. Um, that's the appearance of the Lord. That's what we remember. And only on the request of Devaki, who sure was fearful of Kamsa, please take a form where he will not try and kill you. So he took a baby form. It was really not too handy for him. So, liberation is awaiting for those who um, endeavor with great patience and perseverance. So that's said by Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita, Satatam Kita Yanto Mama Tanta Stadi Dabita Nama Santas Jumanakya Nichi Yukta Pasate Shri Shri Radha Rana Nishvara Ki Shri Dhanna Bhavne Subhaja Ki Shri Gorita Ki Shri Giri Govadhan Ki Jaya that um, the, those great souls, they're always chanting Krishna's glories, and they're in great determination. Um, but by that determination and endeavor, they're always connected to Krishna, Nichi Yukta Pasate. This is um, the result of hearing, of Shravanam, this Kirtan. And then from Kirtan, this Marino. This is the the process that Srila Prabhupada gave us that we're a preaching movement. We're not uh, just some, we're not Bhajananandis. Where we just hear and then we try and get our own liberation. Um, as follows of Lord Chaitanya, um, we are, we are Bhaja Krishna, Bola Krishna, Kota Krishna Shiksha, that we worship the Lord. We, we teach others about the Lord's instructions. Um, and, and we chant His holy name, of course. Hari Nama, Hari Nama, Hari Nama, Eva Kevalam. Hello, Naste, Eva Naste, Eva Naste, Eva Gati, and Yata. Actually, that's the easiest way to see the Pastor of the Lord. Everything is contained in the holy name of the Lord. Amala Hari Nam, Ami Avilasa. Bhakti Vinota Kovis Singh. That those, uh, the, the, the Pastor of the Lord are revealed in that pure name of Hari Nam. This is the way we access us pastimes. When we hear from the Bhagavatam, we may not understand the purports. It's like, well, this is over my head, how can you say it? It, it, it takes birth and doesn't take birth. But for some reason, by Chetadapana Majan, by cleaning, cleansing the heart of our ignorance, of our misconception of ourselves and our relationship with Krishna, those past purports get revealed in a more deeper way. Tesham Satata Yuktanam, Vajita Vrita Purvakam, Tadami Bodhi Yogantam, Yanamam Upiyantate. By constant engagement in devotional service with Priti, with affection, Tadami Bodhi Yogantam, the Lord gives intelligence of how we can come close to Him. This is, the, the, this is what um, Lord Nichananda and Lord Chaitanya, they descended. To give to deliver everyone in Kali Yuga by the two Bhagavats. The book Bhagavat Shrima Bhagavatam and the person Bhagavat, the spiritual master, the pure devotee. So we have to engage in Nityam Bhagavata Sevya. Srila Prabhupada in a class on the prayers of Queen Kunti said that Nityam Bhagavat Sevya means um, to hear and read Srima Bhagavatam or and to uh, uh, fully execute the instruction of the spiritual master. Tabviri pranipatena pranipasena sevya obidekshanti tegyam jnanasta pradarshana. That by approaching a spiritual master, one should uh, inquire submissively, render service, and surrender unto him. Those great realized souls can impart knowledge unto you because they have seen the truth. They have seen you as a spirit soul, the lover of Krishna. They have seen Krishna, the truth. And, and the process of how to connect to Him. 
That is what the Bhagavatam is giving. Sambandha, Abhideya and Parochana. The Sambandha, the knowledge of how our, who we are situated, um, how, how Krishna is situated as the source of everything, and our relationship with both his energy and him himself. That's the sabanya, Sambandhaka, Gyan. Abhideya is the process of how to connect and revive our relationship with the Lord. And then Parojana, the goal of attaining Krishna Prem, of having um, unconditional love for him. The Bhagavatam is really all three. And the spiritual master knows exactly what you need to do to achieve Parojana, Krishna Prem. Srila Prabhupada, in the purport to that verse of 4.34, he says that um, the secret of success, so we always want the quick fix, you know, what's the secret behind Krishna consciousness? How do I succeed? So the secret of success is the satisfaction of the spiritual master. Yasya prasada, Bhagavad prasada, yasya prasada, nagati katopi. That without the mercy of the spiritual master we sing in the world, why can I get the mercy of the world? And then how does that happen? The spiritual master tests the disciple. He'll give you a test. He's like, test? Yes, he'll give you a test. And if the disciple passed the test, then he blesses the disciple with spiritual knowledge. This is how it's attained. We hear from a service, Hridi Sani Vistyo, Matasunata Gyanam Aponam Cha, that the Supreme Lord is situated in the heart of every living entity. From Him comes knowledge, forgetfulness, and remembrance. He makes us forget because we want to. He gives us the remembrance when we, when we desire it and the knowledge. He's given it. Unfortunately, we're so dull we can't hear the Super Soul, so He manifests outside the body as the Spiritual Master. The Spiritual Master is none different from the Super Soul. And then knowledge comes. I was thinking, how's that? It seems like too simple. It seems a bit mystic. How's that work? So I remember I was talking to um, the servant of uh, His Holiness Bhakti Chaitanya Swami. And I remember just like myself, I travel, we do Harina. And when you're endeavoring very closely, either um, with preaching, then Maya turns up the heat and gives you a test. Or even when you're with the spiritual master, because the spiritual master, uh, our spiritual master would say, you know, I'm like fire, you know, you may get burnt. <laughs> you know, so there's some tests there, you know, your false ego comes up or whatever. So I asked him, I go, like, you're always with the pure devotee, like, how do you handle the anatas that come up? Like, we're on high now, you know, or when you're chanting japa, like, all the anatas come to the foreground and then you have to deal with them, whether to follow these material desires or not. What do I do? So how do you deal with that when this comes to the surface? He says, I don't think about it. I don't think about it. I just engage in service and if he's happy, then everything's okay. I'm thinking, what? And then I started thinking about it. Yes, 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 prasad. Bhagavad prasad, yes, yes, prasad, nakati kitopi. Because he satisfied the spiritual master, he got the mercy to control his senses. We can't do it on our own. We need prasada, mercy, <laughs> you know, to control the senses. That's what we're endeavoring, that's what we're struggling with as a conditioned soul. And from that mercy, one can understand the Bhagavatam. One can understand and, and have deep faith. Yes, the Lord appears. He appears for us. He gives these pastimes so we can arouse our original love for Him. Just like the pastime of um, when Krishna was in Vrindavan and comes to decide to um, kill all the children who have appeared in the last 10 days in the Mathura district. And Putana, she is expert in uh, sucking the blood of babies. This is uh, what she loves to do. So she is going around kidnapping so many children and there's news of it. And the, the coward men, they have left to pay taxes to Kamsa. So there's just the ladies in the village. And 
Bhutana has found that yes, he is maybe this is the angel of death for Kamsa. Let's go and find out. And she disguises herself as this beautiful Apsara, this looks like a demigoddess. And comes through. And there were some old men that, that didn't go. And they were fully bewildered. They were like, wow. And then even the the gopis who were there, they were, wow, she must be some goddess, you know. And she says, yes, um, you're, I've come for your child Krishna and my, my breast milk would give him long life. I was like, okay, of course. Then Krishna, of course, he not only sucked the milk, but there was poison applied to that breast. That Krishna, that Krishna would die like this. And when he was sucking the milk, but then started sucking out her life air, and she felt this pain, and she, he wouldn't let go. And then he, she grew to, what, 12 kilometers long? 12 miles? 12 kilometers. <laughs> One of them. Really big. <laughs> And it was like, quite interesting that um, she, and Krishna was thinking like, okay, um, she, she had to make sure that she ran out of the house because he knew that she would grow so big. And then she collapsed on the favorite orchid garden of, um, of Kamsa. And she was just stretched out huge. Huge like this. And, um, and, and Mother Yashoda, she was like so worried about her Krishna. And to always what she would do was um, whenever she was, Krishna was in danger, she would breastfeed him. Just, and that's usually a sign that the, the, the danger is gone and Krishna, my Krishna is safe again. And after this past night, there's very beautiful verses that um, actually they, they bathed in the cow urine and, and got the, the tail of the calf and just to protect him and purify him any, anything that happened to him. And it is prayers, you know, please, uh, do different incarnations of Vishnu, you know, please protect his, his chest, his arms, his legs. I like these ones very much, you know, please protect him from all these types of ghosts and spirit and witches and all these evil spirits. I was chanting them one time. Um, I got affected by black magic and they work. <laughs> There's these prayers, you can find them in the 10th canto if you feel like there's some evil forces after you. And, um, and what's amazing about this pastime is that um, Krishna, even though she was like bent on trying to kill her, uh, kill him like with, her, with her poison, Krishna gave her a, a position as a nurse in, in the spiritual world, fully liberated her, but as a position as like a mother nearly. Because Krishna is so kind that, you know, um, So now thank you. That just a little endeavor on this, on this path of bhakti, there's no loss of diminution. And that person is safe from the greatest danger. So Krishna just accepted, yes, please, you know, you've come as a mother so affectionately and gave him some breast milk. This poison thing, ah, what to do, I have to purify you. So you're not killed. But she attained the position of a nurse, and like as a mother, nearly side by side with Mother Yashoda, trying to kill him. Imagine, Someone joins the temple, the Mariji Ashram, <laughs> and then you find out what she did before. What she used to do? Oh yeah, I used to uh, kill children and suck their blood. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please come join us, join the temple. Would you like to do some service? You think twice usually, you know, you'd be like, mm, I don't know about this person. <laughs> you keep it away from the children or something, you know. <laughs> No, Krishna didn't see that, took the good in her. It wasn't a big deal for her, for, for, for Krishna. And that's, that's this like inconceivable quality of Krishna that um, whatever uh, abominable activity we've done, he, he, he sees through that. We see at the end of the ninth chapter, you know, even if my devotee actually falls down, does a most abominable act, but 
If he's sincere in his determination to come back into devotional service, I consider them saintly. And then he will become righteous very quickly, he says, and attain everlasting peace. This is Krishna's, he sees them as saintly, if they're sincere in their determination. Obviously, one is not supposed to take advantage of such a verse, where like, yes, I can do my sinful activity, I can drink and eat meat, and then, you know, come back to the temple and say, hey, you know, you're supposed to consider me a sadhu, yeah? <laughs> and then, you know, go back to the pub after, into the temple. No. If he's like repentant and like sorry, and wants to come back and be established in devotional service, then we consider them saying that. That's what Krishna says. This is Krishna's viewpoint. And that's what we take. So just by the past time, we can, it awakens this love, this appreciation. Like, like I, I've done some bad stuff, but not like Putana. And I've done some service, I'm doing some service now. I think Krishna will be most one to me. Asabandha, you know, this hope against hope. That Krishna is merciful. He's Dinabandhu. He's uh, the friend of the fallen. And we can see Krishna's kindness. He's appeared as the Bhagavatam. So easily we can associate with Krishna personally through the Bhagavatam. He's in a book form. I don't know if you ever felt this, like, um, you know, you, you're, you're stressed out, or you're tired, or you're sick, and you're there's so many things that is going on in the day. Then you just pick up the Bhagavatam. It's like, oh, let me just pick up the book. And just by picking it, you already feel like relief. <sighs> and then after like three purports, you kind of like, oh, well, yeah, I feel good, I feel good. And then like an hour passes, you're like, why didn't I pick it up earlier? Have you ever felt like that before? Yeah. You know, compared to picking up your phone. Gosh. And then after picking up the phone and spacing out, and you'll be like, why did I do that? <laughs> so it's because you're associated directly with Krishna, the source of all pleasure. Akila Rasamrita Muti. That full rasa, that nectar is there. And connection to Krishna. So that's what the Bhagavatam is, is um, revealing to us more and more of that um, Sambandha that as we are actually original servants of Krishna to develop love for Him through the process of bhakti, seeing how the pure devotees, in all circumstances, actually you'll see in the Bhagavatam, it has the most extreme circumstances in any sort of psychological situation. Any sort of psychological situation you could face is presented in the Bhagavatam, and the devotees give the example of how you can overcome it, by taking shelter of Krishna and actually developing love for Krishna, uh, the Purujana. Um, this, uh, this is the benediction of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Stop here. <laughs> uh, if there's any comments or questions, I'm sorry I went all over the place. <laughs> um, feel free to share a reflection. We have 10 minutes. So. Yes. Prema Harina. <laughs> Thank you for a very nice uh, class. Uh, I always wonder what is the difference between uh, like a general instruction and particular instruction. Sometimes we think general instruction, we not pay too much attention. We want some personal uh, instruction, uh, instruction from Guru. But uh, what do you think? Uh, what is the difference and how we should see these two things, personal or, or, or some general instruction? Um, I just want to know, what do you mean by general instruction? Like, uh, we need to change 16 rounds. Or okay. okay, okay. Yeah, that's a good question. Sometimes we think like, I, I would, actually all the instructions are personal from the spiritual master, even including the 16 rounds and following for it. Actually, that's personal. We may perceive it as general because that's what everyone else is doing. I want to be different. Um, that kind of, um, it's, it's actually the, the desire for distinction. Um, but um, actually that's the most important instruction that the chanting of L16 does. Um, 
so it's not general, it's actually very personal and important. But um, in general, we do get <laughs> uh, a personal instruction uh, and everyone has a different uh, situation. The negative devotion is explaining <laughs> the principle in the detail. Um, out, of, out of the first five items, out of the 64 items of devotional service, it's referring to taking shelter of a spiritual pastor, following the instruction, and serving that instruction. So in regards to the instruction, the principle is whatever the order is, you follow it. What the order will be, can be a detail, can be different in, for each disciple. You know, like, I have a wonderful instruction to do Harinam every day. <laughs> Even if just to go alone. Sounds like, wow, what a nice instruction. It, <laughs> it turns into a yagya sometimes. Sometimes you're really tired, sometimes you're busy all day, and so you have to fit it in. Uh, or you're traveling the whole day, you have to do it in the airport. Um, yeah, but it's okay, you get ecstatic. And um, that funny instruction that Prabhupada has exemplified, having that example that, um, you know, if you ever get money, print books, and please preach into the English-speaking world. Um, when you get that instruction, you have direct association with the spiritual master. You know, associating with the Vani is more important than the Vafu, or more potent, to say. And I've had that experience. Um, my, um, there was a time we had to catch a flight from Johannesburg to Mauritius. And me and my spiritual master were on the same flight. Um, but we were coming from different places, so we meet at the airport. I didn't see him at the departure lounge. And um, the flight was pretty much taking up the whole day, so my only chance to do high numbers was in the airport. So I got, went around the cartels and went around into the shops, and it was fun. And people got into it. And then um, I'm waiting at the gate, just sitting for the flight, and then the shoulder just hits me on the shoulder, like this. Hey, why are you making noise? And it's my spiritual master. <laughs> I was like, oh, sorry, I didn't. He goes, you're going around here doing high enough? Like, How did you know? I didn't see him. Like, and then uh, his servant, uh, Antidup, he showed me a video. So, uh, Maharaj was in the airport lounge. And you can see down into the gate. And, so you can see from the airport lounge, you know, I'm going through with my cartels. And then I stop and talk to some ladies, and then he showed, and he shows Maharaj is laughing at me. <laughs> so for me, it was a very powerful video because actually on Harnam itself, I felt like always he's with me, and you know, like we would meet up with him. And I was like, oh, it's like being on Harnam, being with you. And then I was like, is this bona fide feeling? You know, it's the speculation. Um, and then that video proved that that. You know, he's always watching me from either an airport lounge or from a liberated platform. So that's the life and soul of the spiritual master, uh, of the disciple. That's the pride of the disciple, actually, the instruction of the spiritual master. This pride is like something you put of high value. Um, so once you make the instruction, the life and soul. Yeah. Is that okay, Peru? You want to add something? No? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, as you mentioned here about uh, Shamanda, Abhideya and Prayajana, can you elaborately tell something more about this? Sure. And, and one more thing, what is the difference between awake, sleep, deep sleep and Krishna consciousness? Okay. Two questions, I'll do the first first. Um, so Sambandha Gyan. So Sambandha means, uh, no, Sambandha Gyan means our knowledge of who we are and our relationship with Krishna and his energies. So we are not this material body, we are a spirit soul within the body. The action of the spirit soul, uh, the, the soul is the eternal part and parcel of the supreme soul of Krishna. 
and we act in that relationship through through service, through devotional service, <coughs> through bhakti. So that's the uh, that would be the abhidaya, the process of connection. And that abhidaya, obviously, you'll be guided through guru, sadhu, and sastra. Um, and then you have the parojana, which is to become a, a, a lover of Krishna, to have just anya vidasita sunya jnana kamani anavitam Krishna anushilam bhakti uttama. To have no other desire, no desire for karma, jnana, yoga, um, but only to do what is favorable, to please in the sense of Krishna. Um, Krishnandriya ichidari prema nam. That prema means to give pleasure to Krishna's senses. So that's the parojana. Um, the difference between uh, wakefulness, sleep, and deep sleep, and Krishna consciousness. Uh, I wish I revised the 11th canto. It's there revealed by Krishna in the 11th canto. Um, from my understanding, when one is uh, actually we're always asleep, to be honest, being in this uh, thinking we're separate from Krishna in the material world. But um, I've heard that deep sleep is uh, you're kind of nearly close to the super soul um, because uh, there's no dreaming state. It's just you know, kind of neutral. Maybe. Anyway, I have to research it. And come back to you. Is that okay? To give you the exact answer. Unless someone can answer the question. Ananta. I heard from the Shiva Swami lecture when he was covering the most material nature, deep sleep was a symptom of the mode of ignorance. He mentioned that no dreams taking place in deep, deep sleep. No dreams, yeah. Yes, and passion would be a dreaming, yeah. our dreaming, and goodness may be a wake state. So. Yeah, maybe according to the modes. And then obviously Krishna consciousness is um, relishing our relationship with Krishna on the spiritual platform beyond the modes, on Brahman platform. From Chava Yogyana, Bhakti Yogyana Sevate, Sagaran Sevate, Tan Brahmbuya Yukapate. By unflinching devotional service in all circumstances, one at, at once he transcends the three modes of material nature and attains the platform of Brahman, the spiritual platform. So, yeah, that's... I'll, I'll, re I'll look oh, into it and I'll come back. Thank you very much. I remember reading it, so... Sorry, I couldn't answer. Anyone else? Thank you very much. Oh, sorry. Oh. Yeah, you, do you? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Hare um, You're talking about pleasing the spiritual master, and that's how we can control the senses and gain the mercy. What if, you know, there's different examples if you don't get to speak to your spiritual master so often or if he lives somewhere else, he's not around. It is just simply following his instruction without him even knowing that you're following it, without him knowing that you're trying to please him, is that enough? Or should you try to go out of your way to let him know what you do, that you're following it, to try and do things to please him and then let him know that you're doing these things because you know it'll make him happy? How do you... <coughs> um, yeah, sometimes we're confused. Am I pleasing the spiritual master? So the only answer I've heard, you ask him. <laughs> really, are you pleased with this? Most of the time as a disciple, we kind of propose our own in instruction. It's like, you know, we want to get him to put the rubber stamp, you know. It's like, Maharaj, I would like to do this. Is it okay? <laughs> Um, so, usually we should be a clean slate and say, you know, I'm all yours and you can do with me as you like, you know, what would you like me to do? Um, it's hard to come to that point, it doesn't happen right away. Uh, it, takes, uh, it takes a development of the relationship. And uh, yeah, if you do have opportunity to have personal association, you know, you need to jump on that. Um, because that gives you inspiration to follow the instruction, to follow the body. You know, those memories or the thing he said, and 
you have that connection. Um, in terms of uh, trying to get instruction, if it's not possible to get it, you know, sometimes they just make you wait, maybe you're not ready. Um, if you know someone's not going to do what you say, you don't tell them actually. So sometimes you have to wait. But um, the spiritual master is giving so many lectures. And within those lectures, he's revealing um, you know, what pleases him and how he wants to pretty much spread the movement. That's what every, you know, how to please Prabhupada. That's what every spiritual master is trying to do. And especially by um, the disciple is trying to pay his debt back by trying to spread Krishna consciousness. So, um, you will find out the mood and the mission within those lectures, actually. That's possible, too. It's probably unlimited lectures, right? To hear hours and hours. So for sure there, there's so much intimate instruction as well. Uh, uh, Kadamba just said, when I give a lecture, I'm actually speaking intimately, publicly. The potency is still there. Very nice question. <laughs> Anything else? Thank you very much for your mercy. Kantarashram Bhagatam Ki. Shri Prabhupada Ki.